how big is the private banking sector in this region and where do you see untapped opportunities? Excellent. Taking all that into consideration. I believe the private bank sector in the region, especially Middle East and MENA, Middle East and North Africa, is a huge opportunity. And I think all of us are definitely very excited. And let me tell you where my excitement is coming. Uh, so we've, we've been looking at the BCG report, mm -hmm. that's Boston Consultancy Group, and, and then their report. And I'll give you three anecdotal data from that, which, we, which very much excites us. So effectively, as you know, the, the personal wealth for any individual, ultra high net worth family or, or, or sort of in high net worth individuals, is divided into two parts. We, what we call investable wealth and non-investable wealth. Mm -hmm. And what we have to look at is different regions. Different regions have different percentages in those two sort of uh, personal wealth management or personal wealth of individuals. What we've seen in developed markets, the non-investable asset weighs a lot higher than investable assets. So that's where we'll see that a lot of those clients will have sort of endowments, have pension funds, and have a lot mm -hmm. of that as part of their overall wealth compared to their free cash flow to invest. So that's where we see that. However, in Middle East is the highest percentage of investable assets compared to non-investable mm -hmm. assets. So that excites us because saying that there is a, a larger corpus for us to look at, which is fantastic. On top of that, what they've seen is in 2017, the growth rate of personal wealth in Middle East has grown by more than 10%. And the is that higher than the global average? Global average. On top of it, the projection for the next five years, which is 2017 to 2022, mm -hmm. is 8 to 10 percent, which is again above average compared to the global GDP that we see across the global economies. Mm -hmm. So that excites us because that effectively what says that the growth rate of personal wealth is above average. And percentage of that, which is investable asset, is also a higher amount. So fantastic opportunity for private bank to, to look at how do we help our clients in managing their assets. The third and final point, which is also very critical, I think, for us to look at is the number of affluent individuals in the Middle East and uh, North Africa region, that is the MENA region, it's growing by 14 percent or expected to grow by 14 percent from 2017 to 2022 to get to the 1.5 million individuals, if not. So that also tells us there's enough individuals out there and it's not going to be concentrated with a small Mm -hmm. sort of pool of individuals, but there is quite a large. So that gives us a great opportunity for us to look at and tap into those markets. And this markets. is just GCC or the broader Middle East? This yeah. is Middle East and North Africa, and the North numbers North. that I okay. said. Yeah. The earlier numbers I gave you, that was Middle Eastern in terms of the, the growth rates of the investable and non-investable. Yeah. So definitely huge opportunity for private bank here. Mm -hmm. But your second part of the question, if I may come to that, which was the untapped opportunities. Where yeah. do we see the opportunities coming? Of course, like every private bank client and every high net worth and ultra high net worth families, traditional investments are critical. There's no two ways about that. Diversification, asset allocation, long-term asset growth, long-term diversification, and, and the goals to look at how do we look at the client's financial needs from a core satellite approach where the core is for the long term, satellites are tactical investment ideas. That's definitely going to be there and that is going to be what I would call the underpinning strategy for asset allocation and as well as the requirements from these clients. But the untapped opportunity in my view and, and we've done our internal research and looked at it, the more than 50% of our clients in the Middle East are, are, have allocated about 10 to 25% of their allocations of investments mm -hmm. into what I call long-term sustainable investments. And that's the new exciting area that we are looking at, where we're saying that in the future, what we see is our clients looking at moving away from their philanthropic activities and trying to look at alternatively on sustainable investments. Because to them, Define sustainable. Is that yes. is that SRIs or so sustainable just investments is energy? is an investment which has an investment objective of to grow, yeah. but with a social angle to it. On impact. saying that impact, social yeah. impact. So effectively looking at that, I definitely want to invest and I want my money to grow, mm -hmm. but I want to do it with a cause where mm -hmm. I can give back to the society, giving back to our society in Africa, in Middle East, and see how do we the small businesses that want to grow there but how do we help them mm -hmm. 
and how do we benefit from an investment perspective, but at the same time doing a long-term sustainable growth for those economies and those individuals where we're bringing them into, back into the workforce. Mm -hmm. So that, that impact investing is actually growing fantastically. And everybody's saying that rather than looking at a philanthropic activity, I look at it this where we know that there is an objective to grow, but everybody will grow together as well as the, the investment. So, so that's where we're seeing a huge shift. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I believe that is the untapped opportunity that where we can add value prospectively with Standard Charter's core roots in Asia, Africa, and Middle East, which are the emerging market growth engines, and to see how we can add value to those economies and looking at those sustainable investments mm -hmm. and how do we bring that to our private banking clients.